Joe Theismann are with me, and you couldn't get two more evenly matched teams or two more serious people about beating each other than these two. Joe, Kansas City, number one scoring, number one offensive team in the NFL. How have they been able to accomplish that? Well, Pat, they basically have done it on the legs of Priest Holmes. Here's a guy who scored 27 rushing touchdowns last year, set an NFL record. He also happened to be the leading receiver for the Kansas City Chiefs. He has a great running style. You'll see him tonight. He'll glide and all of a sudden burst. He has speed. He has power. The one team he's had trouble running against have been the Denver Broncos. This is a team last year that he was not able to get 100 yards against on the ground. If the Chiefs have a chance at winning this football game, Priest definitely has to get 100 tonight. All right, Joe and Paul, Denver has lost a lot of weapons, including Clinton Portis. How are they going to replace him? Well, you know, Pat, if you look at the history of this football team and the way they run the ball, it just doesn't matter. I know they lost a 1,500-yard rusher in Portis, but they have Quentin Griffin. This guy is more than adequate. And if you're worried about his durability because he's 5'7 and he only weighs 195 pounds, forget about it. When he was at the University of Oklahoma, he carried the ball over 700 times. And another thing, his mother said, you know, he's shy and he doesn't like to be the center of attention. Well, young man, tonight you will be in the spotlight. Well, Clinton Portis is gone, no longer a Bronco, but Champ Bailey is here. For more on Champ, let's go down to Susie Colbert. Pat, there is no doubt that the most debated trade in the offseason was running back Clinton Portis for cornerback Champ Bailey. And a lot of people wondered how Mike Shanahan could trade 14 touchdowns for two interceptions. Well, Shanahan, who has three Super Bowl trophies at his house, says, take a look at this. Three out of the last four Super Bowl champs were number one in points allowed. If you wanted to win it all, it's defense first. And he added, he's had a lot of successful backs, but shutdown corners are much harder to find. As far as impacting the defense, Bronco after Bronco told us the mentality of the whole D is more aggressive because champs got them covered. And it doesn't end there. Quarterback Jake Plummer said going against Bailey in practice has forced him to focus more. Veteran Rod Smith agrees. Learning ways to beat Bailey has made him better. But the true test begins tonight. And we've got Champ Bailey wired. I need two balls. I need two balls. I'm telling you. I know that first one, I'm going to be a little. <laughs> I'm ready, though. <laughs> in Besco Field at Mile High, the Chiefs have never won here. ESPN presents Visa Skycam, innovative technology on ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Visa Skycam provides some of the most unique and memorable images ever seen from angles that no other single camera in the world can achieve. We're excited to bring it to you every Sunday night. Now let's join public address announcer Dallin Roach. The, the cast members from the Denver Center Attractions Broadway production of Heaven Help Us. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise to honor America. This weekend marks the third anniversary of the tragic events of September 11, 2001. As we kick off the 2004 NFL regular season, we ask you to remember how our lives changed that day. We also remember the men and women of our armed forces and all of those who have given their lives in the service of our country.
that's the way the national anthem should be sung. We'll be ready to go in just a minute. The captains at the center of the field for the toss of the coin. The Chiefs and the Broncos. They do not necessarily like each other. Probably the single most classic rivalry in football today. A lot of teams have moved on, expansion, free agency. These two teams have maintained that rivalry no matter who's coaching. Look at the Chiefs' record under Dick Vermeil. Better every year, and Vermeil thinks they'll be better this year. He says this is the best team he's ever seen, meaning his own team. Across the way is Mike Shanahan, one of the most brilliant offensive minds in the NFL or in football. And his success here is well known. Both of them outstanding gentlemen. Well, you know, you said these two teams really dislike each other. They do as soon as this ball is kicked off. That's when they really dislike each other. Well, you know, you're going to see it. They're going to whack each other. And yeah. the other thing, too, is there's a tremendous amount of respect for the fans in each home hometown that it's it's unbelievable the home field advantage that these teams enjoy and there's nothing like opening day there's nothing like both teams have finished with training camp they've stopped all the foolishness they stopped resting people now they're ready to go they're both zero and zero dante hall as you would expect back to receive for Kansas City, and look what he did last year. Longest, well, it could be longer, I guess, if somebody could kick it that far. He's back deep for Kansas City. Jason Elam, uh, Mike Anor, I beg your pardon, Elam doesn't kick off anymore. Mike Anor does. He also punts. I'm sorry, Pat, I can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> this is unbelievable. There is some noise in Invesco. I don't think they're cheering Skycam right now. Good, solid kick. Out of the end zone. That's one way to take care of Dante Hall. Kansas City's offensive anchored by one of the best lines in football, anchored by Will Shields. Nine consecutive years, he's gone to the Pro Bowl. The linebackers, I uh, beg your pardon, the wide receivers. Dante Hall, who was just back, has become a wide receiver and a very dangerous one. The quarterback is Trent Green, and he is the catalyst. Side is Priest Holmes on first carry. Priest gets about five. Well, the one thing, let, let's get this in there. Trevor Price, who is a defensive end, but he's now playing tackle for the Denver Broncos, said to us in a meeting, which I thought was interesting, he said Priest Holmes is the fastest guy in football with a ball in his hand. That's hard to believe. Two tight ends for Kansas City this time. Gonzalez fake to home strength green looking deep and throwing deep and wide open Dante Hall he fell down at the Eddie Kennison I'm sorry if he didn't fall down he would have scored oh boy Trent Green aired this out, and Eddie Kennison did everything he could to get there. If this ball was thrown just a little bit shorter, Eddie Kennison would have taken it in stride in the end zone. Trent, great protection by the offensive line. Look at him extend for that ball. Just manages to get hold his balance. Now he tries to get up. As he gets up, the ball gets knocked loose. I would challenge that if I was Mike Shanahan. They've already said... It was a fumble. Ruling on the field as the receiver was down by contact. Uh -huh. First down Kansas City. Oh, I do. Now I would challenge him. Here it comes. Now I would no, I, well, let me see. If the ruler's down. He's down by contact. Why challenge? You, well, you can't. 57-yard pickup. Trent Green to Eddie Kennison. Well, I'll tell you, take a look at this. Now, Kennison, you talk about concentration on the ball. Now, if they go the other way, you, you just say, well, he's better off staying down. 
but he really thought he had him beaten so bad how that he can could you, get up and score. How can you call that down by contact? Yeah, I was His knees were not on the ground. Al Wilson hits him when he's standing up. Mike Shanahan has every right to be upset, and it should down be challenged. Down by contact is not a challengeable play. Why don't I start right now the first week of the year? Go ahead. Okay? The competition committee of the National Football League, if they want to use instant replay to make the game fair, should make this a challengeable call. Mike Shanahan's Denver Broncos just had an opportunity taken away from them because of a problem with the rule. Priest Holmes and Tony Richardson. It's first and ten. The 18 for Kansas City. Oh, and let's get even. Marco Coleman. Yeah. Ball start. Maybe eight off. But he was pulled off. Denver's defensive line. Trevor Price normally and had been playing defensive end. Now he's moved inside. He says he doesn't mind. The linebackers are led by Al Wilson in the middle, and he is the catalyst. He will hit you. In the secondary, John Lynch, longtime Tampa Bay veteran, he brings leadership and contact to the secondary. Reese home around the corner. Oh, Pat, let me, let me tell you something. When Trevor Price told us that he's the fastest guy with the football, you want to see someone get to the outside fast, faster than most people I know. Watch Priest Holmes, number 31. Tony Gonzalez is sealing off on the outside, but look at how quick. Al Wilson makes a mistake by going inside, but look at how fast he gets to the outside. And then that's Champ Bailey coming up to make the play. Man. Second down. They need about seven. Sometimes it's not the big long runs that impress you, but it's runs like that where he goes right up inside. And we're not talking about the biggest back. He's only 5'9", a little over 200 pounds. But you watch him take the cut, go right up into the middle, and take the contact, and winds up with a four-yard gain. Every time I think about the fact that he spent four years in Baltimore before he came to the Chiefs as a free agent. When the Chiefs get down into the red zone, they just don't settle for any kind of scores. That was 70% scoring touchdown. Three wide outs set to the right, no backs. Kent Green looking, a lot of time. Pass to Johnny Morton, I believe. Boy, I'll tell you what, just Trent Green just shows it. They talked about him in training camp, Joe, and, and, and everybody's talking about how Ad, ad, not adequate, how great he was in, in training camp and how well he's throwing the football. That time he threw the ball sidearm. He can deliver it any way he has to. Came off a great year last year, Pro Bowl season last year, here first one. 24 touchdowns, 12 interceptions, one of two guys in the league, over 4,000 yards throwing. Kennison in motion. And off the home. About the two. This is a classic Kansas City Chief run. You'll see Pro Priest Holmes because of the athleticism of the offensive line. Watch how they stretch Denver's defense. See the offensive lineman? Now, what he does very patiently follows Tony Richardson, waits for him to kick out, and then turns up inside. Everybody, including the center, Casey Wigman, pulls on a play like that. Gonzalez, I believe. Kenoy Kennedy, number 28, is back there with him. This, this ball was just thrown up, and the only one that's really going to get it is Tony Gonzalez. Watch this. Trent Green is now waiting on him. Kenoy Kennedy does a terrific job of coverage here, and there was only one place for him to throw the ball, and that was high and away. And keep in mind now, you, even though it's going into the end zone, there's still the five-yard chuck rule. Kenoy Kennedy did a good job of getting his hands off of Tony Richardson. What did happen? Third and Tony Gonzalez. Two at the two. Close. No, that's not close. That's it. Touchdown. 
Priest Holmes with a backward nudge got it in. You know, it's funny about Priest Holmes last year. He says, last year, all I want to do is score touchdowns. Well, when you get him down here, look at this. When he sees the goal line, he goes in backwards. I mean, that is difficult. Richardson just buries Kenoy Kennedy, number 28. That's why Tony Richardson went to the Pro Bowl as well last year. Eight plays, 80 yards. They kept the ball four minutes, 14 seconds. Chiefs ahead, 6-0. Lawrence Tynes is the new Kansas City place kicker. Steve Cheeks the holder. He's new, replacing Morton Anderson, but he's been with the Chiefs for three years previously. So this is not their first look at him. 7 0. Kansas City League. Priest Holmes, number 31, who just scored for Kansas City to put them ahead 7 0. They look very impressive. Hmm. Priest Holmes looks very impressive. He's, he's an entirely rededicated football player this year, almost considered retirement in the offseason. You know who else looks pretty good? Very good, I should say. Trent Green. Mm. Yep. Hines kickoff sails into the end zone. Ruben Jones is going to bring it out. Good coverage, but he stays on his feet and gets out to the 30. Good effort. William Barty brought it down. 7-0. We're in the first quarter at Invesco on opening night. Dial for every story. Rocky Mountain Cold Coors Light, the official beer sponsor of the NFL and Super Bowl 39. Sirius Satellite Radio. Listen to the entire NFL every week only on Sirius Satellite Radio. And Mazda, always the soul of a sports car. We're at Invesco Field at Mile High in the beautiful city of Denver. Pat Summerall with Paul McGuire and Joe Theismann as this will be Denver's first track on offense. Jake Plummer, longtime Cardinal quarterback in his second year. Quentin Griffin's the deep back, and he's now in motion. Jake. Incomplete intended for Quentin Griffin. Denver's offensive line, one change. Matt Lepsis moves over to left tackle. George Foster moves to right. Hughes. Rod Smith, the veteran who's caught so many clutch passes over the years, is back and leads a new group now. Jake Plummer, the quarterback. Behind him, Quinton Griffin and Ruben Drone. Jake drops. Looks deep. Gets out of the, of the flag on the play. Jake scrambles. But the flag, flag back near the pile. So that should be offensive holding. The biggest question for the Kansas City Chiefs is not how good their offense was going to be. They've been the best scoring offense in the, for the last two years in football. The big question remained on the defensive side of the ball. He grabbed Jake the Snake's face mask because right. he was breaking out, and that's what they got him for. Well, that's the one thing that this defense wasn't able to do last year. The Kansas City defense was not able to generate any kind of pressure. There you see Browning grabbing Jake as he eludes the pursuers inside, but it looks like Gunther Cunningham, their new defensive coordinator, ha has changed the attitude of this defense. They will go after people. Aggressive. Any new defensive coordinator will say that's what we're going to do. Be more aggressive. <laughs> Nothing to it. Kansas City's defense, Eric Hicks, the defensive end who's followed Gunther Cunningham, and he should be better because of him. Monty Beisel in the middle is the new middle linebacker. He's the only new element on the Chiefs. Defense. The rest of them have been there. Jerome Woods, known around the league as one of the most, at best, violent tacklers. Nothing dirty, but he'll hit you. Oh, 
on the stop. Quentin Griffin obviously has some pretty good shoes to fill. Clinton Portis, of course, now with the Washington Redskins and had a sensational day today. And everybody wondered, he's a little guy, he's five foot seven, he's about 195 pounds. Will he be able to pick it up? Is it the running back or is it the system that makes running back successful here? System. Only the, the season's going to tell. There's Champ Bailey on offense. Champ Bailey on offense is effective. Mike Shanahan said yesterday if he's in the game, the ball is going to him. And I'll tell you, this was a dive, but they say that Champ Bailey was out of bounds before he dove. Little swing outside to him. Now watch the move he makes. Well, the Kansas City bench was pointing to right where the spot was. And Mike Shanahan says, look, it's fourth down and short. We're going for it. This is a coach that's got a lot of confidence in his offensive line and his running back. And now a timeout. And this is a Denver timeout. They have two left. Opening night and in Mesco. The Chiefs and the Broncos, and the Chiefs ahead by seven. But the Broncos on the move. Fourth and short. Mike Shanahan has decided we're going to take a crack at it. Runner pass, Paul. I would run. He's got, you only have a half, and you don't even have a half a yard. All I have to do is get to the 41 yard line. I run play action. Would you really? How about wide? How about you get the first down? How about a little toss, Joe? <laughs> Ten yard pickup. And Matt Lipsis got the key block. And look at the end of this play. And watch the hit on Quentin Griffin. I'll tell you, this, this little guy is 5'7", 195 pounds. But I'm going to tell you something, he is really strong. Now, he is, he is hit out of bounds. Yes, he is. Helmet to helmet. I like it. I like, I like just like the fourth down call. Look how small he is. Small looking in the back. Lumber back to throw. Across the field, Rock Smith. Stopped by Warfield. Rod Smith, the, the elder statesman, 74 catches last year, only three touchdowns. And his long reception last year was just 38 yards. And that, I think, was in part of the fact that Jake Plummer was brand new in this offense. He hadn't really developed a rapport with Rod Smith, but they spent a lot of time in the offseason together getting to know one another. And I would expect Rod's production, especially on touchdowns, to go up. New runner for Denver. This is Garrison Hurst, the deep back. And he gets the catch. He's still got a first, doesn't he? Well, Hurst crosses the 20, gets the first down. Pat Summerall with Joe Theismann and Paul McGuire in Fesco Field at Mile High, along with Susie Colber, who's down on the sideline. The Chiefs lead 7-0, but the Denver Broncos are moving inside the Chief 20. Well, Joe, you asked the question, is it the runner or is it the system? It's the system. I think hey, these guys, th this offensive line can move it. But I think Clint Portis is pretty darn good. Yeah, yes. I, I have no question with that. I'm just saying we can still plug in. Summer to throw it. Incomplete. Bet at the last second by Sean Barber. Back to your point there, Paul. That's the reason that Mike Shanahan made the deal. He made the deal to send Clinton Portis to Washington for Champ Bailey and a second round pick simply because he believes in the system and in this offensive line. Now, you know, everybody says, well, Champ Bailey's just a defensive guy, won't touch the ball that much. He will impact the way the Denver Broncos can call their defenses. They will also be more aggressive because he's on the field. But Champ Bailey kept this drive alive. Second and ten. Hurst. I beg your pardon, Griffin back in again. 
For more on Quentin Griffin, let's go down to Susie Colburn. Pat, a great way to describe him would be sneaky confident. He's the type of guy who might run for 200 yards, and he'll still want to know what he could have done better. He's sincere. He's coachable. If he trusts you, he will run through a wall for you. Talking to him is just different. He's quiet. He's shy. But, man, when he gets on the field, he is all heart and power. Again, Champ Bailey in the offensive lineup, so watch him. Watch Kramer go down. Bonnie Holiday. Champ Bailey may be in, but if Bonnie Holiday is on Jake Plummer like that, he has no chance to operate. You gotta block him. I mean, you get Bonnie Holiday's a big man. You can't miss him. He's to the left of your screen. Watch this here. I mean, nobody touches him. They don't block him. You got Rod Smith out there trying to block on him? I don't well, think so. Well, Rod Smith is looking around saying, wait a second. He's not supposed to go that quick. <laughs> so Jason Elam will go from 43 yards out. Certainly not a long distance for him, and he's successful. Jason Elam, 43-yard field goal, puts the Broncos on the board. 7-3 Kansas City, 5-19 left in the first quarter. So far, the kind of game we expected. Dante Hall, number 82, is deep. Mike and Knorr will kick off for Denver. First kick sailed deep into the end zone. Ball fell down. Well, and you, you just know the things that Dante Hall can do when he gets his hands on the ball. I mean, for it, scored two touchdowns on kickoffs last year, two on punt returns. Electrifying is the only way to describe Would it. Would you tell him any time, no matter where the ball goes, bring it out? If you uh, talk, talk about Dante Hall. Well, that's what he did on that punt return in the first Denver game is he took it on the three-yard line. Nobody's supposed to field a punt on the three-yard line, but he did. Changed the game, won the game for Kansas City. Nowhere to kick off. Short. Uh, it looked like it was short, but it chases Dante short. Hall back into the end zone, goes on out of the end zone. There is a difference in kicking at a mile high. The ball will go farther. Breeze home coming up. Kansas City 7, Denver Broncos 3. 519 left in the first. Kansas City has the ball at their own 20. This might be, although we hear it from a lot of other places, the best offensive line in the entire NFL. That belongs to the Chiefs. There are people who would argue with you. Other offensive lines. Trent Green swings it to Priest Holmes. He fights for yardage D.J. Williams. It's the ability of Priest Holmes to run with the football that gives Eddie Kennison an opportunity to be able to make a big play in that last drive. Priest fakes up inside. Trent Green drops back. He's going to run the little fake. You have to respect Trent. You have to respect Priest Holmes. Priest, but look at the job the offensive line does. Now as he hangs the ball up, Eddie Kennison stretches out, makes the play. And now, ladies and gentlemen, what happened after that you didn't need to see. It was a fumble and recovery that didn't happen. It wasn't that seen. <laughs> You gotta learn how to let go, you know what I mean? <laughs> second and five. Holmes, oh boy. Hammers into the secondary and gets the first down. Well, you know, Brian Waters, Waters on the left side, uh, number 54, 77, Willie Rolf. I mean, this is a big, consistent offensive line. These guys have been together for quite a while, but just take a look at the hole that opens up here. And it only has to be a crack for Priest Holmes, because once he sees it, he's in it. And Al Saunders, the offensive coordinator of the Kansas City Chiefs. Situations like this, loves to come out with the play action one more time. He almost ran over John Lynch, and that doesn't happen all that often. Green, incomplete. 
more on Priest Holmes. Let's go down to Susie Colbert. Well, Pat, Priest Holmes put a scare into the Chiefs this offseason when there was talk of him retiring. Well, he wanted to clear up that this was not a case of a Ricky Williams. He said it had nothing to do with his desire for football. That is still intact. It was more about what he had sacrificed his whole career in terms of family. It was always football before family, and especially now his dad is in Iraq. He wanted to be there for his family. His dad said, what, are you crazy? Stick with it. And that's what Priest has done. His father said, why would you do that? Priest Holmes up the sidelines, very near a first down, knocked out by John Lynch. Well, Joe said he's only 5'9", about 200 pounds, a little more. I'm going to tell you one thing you better not do to this guy is try to arm tackle him, because if you do that, he's going to take your arm with him. Watch this run, folks. Reach out, forget it. This guy's too powerful and he's too fast. Well, you figure he's going to touch the ball right around 400 times. Now, Jamal Lewis, for example, in Baltimore, a big bat, they try and keep his touches under 400. Had 320 runs last year and 74 catches. Back to throw is green. Incomplete. Intended for Jason Dunn. Priest Holmes, for the last three seasons, has been number one in yards rushing, yards from scrimmage, and look at the touchdowns. And you know what? We may as well add the other one tonight. He's had 62 count starting the, with this evening. Unbelievable. Ranked first everywhere. That's why this offense has been productive. But it hasn't been the problems on offense for Kansas City that's kept them from where they want to go. Fake draw. And down back inside the 20, 25 yard line, Reggie Hayward. And Mario Fatape for a loss of 23 yards by those two guys. I'll tell you what, Reggie Hayward, you got to give this guy a lot of credit. He's number 98. Watch him stay with this. He stays, he stays, he stays. He's got. He waits for Trent Green to come back his way, and I'm going to tell you something, that is just outstanding defense by the defensive line. That was a screen that really went bad. What I was surprised with on that play is Trent Green, as veteran as he did, and is able to do, once you get out of the pocket, and it's a screen, you can just throw the ball away. Timeout, Kansas City. Forty-three left to play in the first quarter. A Kansas City timeout. Join us for a full night of football next Sunday on ESPN, starting at 7:30 Eastern with NFL Prime Time. And Jason Taylor and Zach Thomas and the Dolphins travel to Cincinnati to take on the Bengals. Trent Green try to make up some of it. Derek Blaylock. Backs up Priest Holmes made that reception. No, that, that really is all you could do. It's yeah. either, either run that little gimmick play right in the front or run a draw play, which is not going to get it. <laughs> 33 yards. Have you ever seen a play in a playbook, third and 33? You ever saw a play in it? You saw a play? I, I, Coach Yo's used to tell me to call something like that. I never got a play from the sidelines <laughs> on third and 30. You're on your own? I'm on my own. Yeah. Rod Smith back deep to Denver. Steve Cheek. For Kansas City, and this is a dandy. Smith back to the 11-yard line. Got some room to return. Rod Smith. Good return back to the 40. Champ Bailey, who's been in a couple of times on offense for Denver, is wired for sound. So we'll be getting some sound. There's two things that really get me going. And I see the soldiers, and I see Little League football games. <laughs> Come on, Ralph! And I knew that the whole time I'm running, I'm like, I'm going to just dive across the market. You, you know a guy, when you sit down and talk with him, and you said to him, you know, you're, you're probably the best cover corner in football? Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, I am. Well, I'll tell you something. If he wanted to be, he could probably be one of the best receivers in football. I mean, he, unbelievable career at Georgia, the things he did. He was on the field like 100 snaps every game at least. Just an incredible athlete. And, and only as the season goes on will you be able to evaluate the trade, Clinton Portis, 
for Champ Bailey. I, I don't think you can do it in one game. Certainly, Clinton Portis made a statement today for the Washington Redskins, rushing for almost 150 yards. But Champ Bailey will have an impact on what the Denver Broncos will do on defense, and it looks like Mike Shanahan's going to have him have an impact on the offensive well, side. We have as well. a player down, William Barty, still being attended to. While they're attending to him, we'll attend to some business. Who had the best day of anybody in the NFL today? Our Sunday stud. You can vote right now by logging on to the ESPN. Dot com or NFL.com. We'll give you the results in the fourth quarter. Just to give you some ideas, Sean Alexander. Now, you know what? That is a usually you can one just jumps out at you. Yep. But that is one tough group to pick from. Well, how about that 242 yard five touchdowns? That doesn't jump out at you. Did you, that, miss, did you miss that? That jumps out at me. Uh, you know, the hunt, <laughs> i tell you, the 148 by Clinton Portis. If you saw that game, he ripped off one big run and then had 28 carries where it was just being pounded well, by that Tampa Bay defense. You're absolutely right. You know, you talk about Clinton Portis and he's there in Washington, but I'll tell you one thing right now, that guy took a beating today and he doing doing that. I mean, this guy came back and back and back. He got hammered in that ball game. Rod Smith on this punt return. There's William Barty, number 24. Comes in, just looks like he hits his head on Rod Smith's hip. And he also got hit in the hip. Yeah, somebody looked like somebody passed him and kicked him on the way by. Well, there was a, a the trade that we've mentioned already and Susie's talked about. Clinton Portis from Denver to Washington. Champ Bailey here. Good trade? Well, it, 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 that remains to be seen because of the running back situation here and how this team, the Denver Broncos, run the football. But I, I'll tell you the way I feel about it. I don't give up a score for a guy that stops a score because the guy that's going to score is going to score more than that guy can stop. See, but here's the other thing. That might be a case in a general statement, but if you're the Denver Broncos and your corners were so bad and you struggled so much last year, you needed a Clinton. You need a Champ Bailey. Mm -hmm. You feel like you have had running backs. You've had four of them come in here and rush for over 1,400 yards. I think Mike Shanahan probably said, hey, look, I can find another running back. I just can't find another corner. Well, he had Anderson here too, Pat. And, sure. and, then, and then Anderson is out for the, for the season. With He's a growing didn't, injury. Yeah, yep. he didn't count on that. Oh, Landis no. Gary was a great one here. Obviously, Terrell Davis had a great career here. But I, again, I go back, it's a system. Plus, Portis had told him he was going to hold out. He had a contract, but he had told him he was, he was not going to honor the contract. He was going to hold out. So if the guy's going to hold out, if you believe it's the system, then it's a great deal for Mike Shanahan. Yeah. He I, gets a player that he needs. Actually, he got a second-round draft choice, another running back by the name of Tatum, Tatum Bell, Bell who Oklahoma they State think is going to be really special as well. So the running back lineage continues mm -hmm. here in Denver. They never run out of running backs, do they? Not, well, as long as that offensive line's intact. Interesting situation regarding their offensive line. Their longtime mentor, Alex Gibbs, is now with the Atlanta Falcons. And it, you have an entirely different situation with Rick Dennison taking over as the offensive line coach for Mike Shanahan's Broncos. And I, I, did, I just think, and you brought it up, Paul, I think time will tell on the Champ Bailey. Well, deal. that's the only way we're going to tell. Yeah. yeah. But I, I, think Champ's, I think Champ in his own right will have an impact. Certainly, he'll make Larry Coyer's job, the defensive coordinator, a lot easier simply because now he'll be able to bring some pressure. You know, it's amazing. We were out there at the practice session the other day. We're looking at the Denver Broncos offensive line. Now, we're used to going to places, and everybody's, everybody's got the best offensive line in football. Well, sure, yeah. Kansas City has the best one. Denver has the best Green one. Bay. Green, Green Bay. Baltimore has the best one. Everybody has the best one. But we don't know who the best one is. But the thing about it is, when you look at the Denver Broncos, these guys standing there, huh? they're, all, they're all chiseled. These guys are thin. Let me remind you while we have the time. Monday night countdown at 7.30 Eastern on ESPN. That's the best place to get ready for Monday night football. Then on ABC at 9 Eastern, Brett Favre and the Packers take on Jake DeLome and the Panthers. That's Monday night on ABC. ABC's Monday night football. Brett Favre and Jake DeLome. 
Two boys from the south. A couple of country boys going to lock it up. Watching Jake DeLome through the preseason, you just you get the feeling that this is a young man that just didn't have a fluke of a season last year that he uh, has settled in very comfortably as the Carolina Panthers quarterback. Still attending to William Barty. Well, you know, I, I just love what, what happens. They don't take any chances with mm -hmm. anything. If, if the slightest injury, I mean, it, and you can't get up, you just stay down and let us take care of you. And, you know, Dick Vermeil is one of those guys that just, he really loves every one of his football players, genuinely does. You see Barty's head come in. Yep. He hits right on Rod Smith's hip and then goes down. And you only hope that it's a stinger and that he'll be all right. Puts his head down and just gets it snapped. He is still down on the gurney. That's one of those blows to the side of the head that you're not expecting. You do I, you do a lot of work. I mean, in, in training, mm -hmm. the the strength coaches work a lot on that neck area, especially for defensive backs, linebackers. You know, the guys that deliver blows with their heads. They they spend an awful lot of time trying to make that area strong for those guys. Hey, the other thing too is you know when you see the guy gets get hit in the head like he did. When you're taught as as a football player to play with your head up mm -hmm. and not your head down. Dick Vermeil. One of the one of the real gentlemen. He may cry, but he's a heck of a guy. We had to throw him out of the meeting last night. He'll stay forever. Cried yes. yesterday morning. They show the motivational film of the past five Super Bowls to his team before they came out here. And he cried. Rod Smith. 14 yard pickup. You know, it's interesting, Pat, talking to Rod Smith the other day, and he, you know, the one thing you say, you know, here you are, uh, one of the elder statesmen on this football team, yep. and you're going to get double coverage because really no one on this team has stepped up to help him. Nobody. Well, he preferred the term mature versus old. Yeah, he didn't like elder, elder statesmen. Yeah, I think he likes mature. <laughs> he's, the, he's the mature member of the receiving court. Yeah, but he's got to get some help on that outside. He's 34. <laughs> the reception and this is someone that the Denver Broncos absolutely have fallen in love with this young man has worked hard right from the beginning the thing they really like about him now is he's a hands catcher see he catch the ball with his hands when he first got here he used his body then he went away after a mini camp and they said you know you really need to work on catching the ball with your hands now he comes back, he's a hands catcher. And when you talk to Champ Bailey, who covers him every day in practice, he says he's tough on the bump and run. Pretty good throw by Jake, too. Jake rolling, dropping. Well, Jake could have sat the lead. They've been waiting on him. I think Jake could have gone a long way, and that's exactly what Mike Shanahan was yelling to him from the sidelines. Yeah, he came out to the outside and nobody was there. Everybody went down the line of scrimmage and they left him alone. Bonnie Holiday just sold himself out on the play. And Jake came out, could have done anything. They won't get another playoff before the end of the quarter. That's the end of the quarter. Scores Kansas City seven, the Broncos three. But the Broncos are at the door. Shanahan and Jake Plummer. I mean, Jake, Jake, shut up and listen, Jake. He's not saying congratulations. No, listen. Just he's tell him to slow down. I mean, he's, you know, Jake's like a stallion. I mean, that's the way he was in Arizona. He's a playmaker. He's trying to become more disciplined. He's trying to become more consistent. That's what Mike Shanahan wants him to be. Quentin Griffin goes out in motion, leaving no back. Jake is chased, falls, and throws. Yeah. Gunther Cunningham and Dick Vermeil said, we want our linebackers to play downhill. Now, this is Scott Vegeta, 
the linebacker came off and got a piece of Jake. They are running downhill. I talked to Gunther Cunningham yesterday, spent a lot of time with him. He said, Joe, if you see any of my linebackers four yards off the line of scrimmage, they won't be in the game. Everybody's got to cheat up and try and put pressure. Look at how close these linebackers are to the line of scrimmage. Of course, Jake to take a timeout, right? That was Gunther Cunningham we saw just a moment ago in the press box. Brought back to toughen up the Kansas City defense. The discovery of gold sparked a mass migration of 100,000 miners to the Denver area in 1859. They didn't have a franchise here yet, but they had enough people. <laughs> Champ Bailey oh, again. And the throw. The flag on the play. The pass is caught by Rod Smith. But a flag on the play. There was a lot of movement in the middle of that line. Ben Hamilton, number 50, was one of them moving. Bernie Kukar is the referee, by the way, in a white hat. That's bullshit. Offside. Defense at the neutral zone and fraction. The penalty is declined. First off. William Barty, who was carried off a moment ago, the information we get is that he has a sprained neck. Uh, he is questionable whether he'll be able to come back or not, but he has feeling in his limbs. So that's a good sign. Great sign. Great sign. Jake going to take off. Jake scramble. Do you get the feeling that that play was called specifically based upon the play before when he dumped the ball off? You mean when Shanahan jumped right, on? Well, him? when Shanahan just said, look, relax. Here comes the play action fake. Quentin Griffith goes off to the right. Wait a minute, watch Quentin Griffin. <laughs> it's up. Uh, Ryan Sims just knocked him out. Nice job by Sean Barber, not letting him turn the corner, force him back inside where the help is. Don't give him a chance to even get out of bounds. And then Jake does a nice job of getting to the ground. Second and four at the six. Close to the goal line. He's so short that for those big guys in the middle, sometimes it's hard to even find him. Well, everybody that does a Denver game, they know one thing about, about Denver. You only make one cut. Watch this pit. Watch the block in this line. They only have to hold for just a moment till he hits the hole. And once he sees it, he's gone. There are no dancing by the backs on Denver's football team. You make one cut and you go. That rule has never changed. The dancing is done in the end zone. Here's Jake Rowling looking and throwing touchdown. Vegeta had no chance. And you talk about being caught in a rock and a hard place. This guy's coming up. Does he go for Jake? If he does, he lets Quentin Griffin get by. That's when you know a play is designed exactly the way you want it. It has to be a good fake by the back, a good fake by the quarterback. Jason Elam. That's the point is good. Seven over Kansas City. Eight plays, 59 yards. They kept the ball three minutes, 46 seconds. Denver will kick off the touchdown pass from Jake Plummer to Quentin Griffin. Dante Hall back deep for Kansas City. Mike Anor to kick it off. He kicked the first two off out of the end zone. Let's see where this one goes. Well, I don't want to see him kick it out of the end zone, Pat. I don't either. I, I want to see Dante. I want to see how good he kicks into the wind. I want to see Dante handle one. I would have. I would bet you this one doesn't go out of the end zone. Well, they're also going to directional kick to him because they don't want him to get a free run at it. A lot of 
of work. Let's quickly go down to Susie Colbert. Well, guys, Sunday night opener, one of the best rivalries in football early, dominated by Priest Holmes near the goal line. No one smells the end zone like Holmes. 45 yards and a touchdown. Jake Plummer getting comfortable in the Broncos' offense is his second year. 7 to 10 for 66, including the touchdown to Quentin Griffin. Big shoes to fill. He's off to a good start tonight. It's 10 7 Broncos. First and 10, Kansas City. At their own 23. Back to Priest Home. Nothing doing this time. DJ Williams, a really like him, makes the play. Oh, yeah, he, this guy is, uh, DJ Williams is, is, is just, I mean, just a great player. They said he's the best cover linebacker. He's a rookie. He does everything right. He's very quiet, and every guy on his team loves him. He had an interception the other day at practice, and the whole team went over and congratulated him. Guess where, where he went to college? Um, <laughs> is it near Arkansas? No, no. <laughs> like so many great ones from Miami. And Green going deep. Good cover. Excellent cover. Kelly Herndon. You talk about a guy working his way into a lineup. Kelly Herndon, he was cut twice by San Francisco once by the Giants, played in NFL Europe, was a practice squad player here. Now he's running stride for stride with Eddie Kennison and has locked down that corner position opposite Champ Bailey. You know they have not thrown one ball to Champ Bailey's side. It's probably not the end of that story either. <laughs> Looks to be John Welburn. He's the only new member. It is loud. So much of what the Kansas City Chiefs do on offense has to do with a lot of shifting. Here in Denver, this noise creates a problem to get everybody set and coordinated. I think it's going to limit what Al Saunders, the offensive coordinator the Chiefs, wants to do because of how loud this place is. Well, I'm making some racket now. Jeff Green back. Has time and fires down the middle, almost intercepted by Lynch. On the rebound. Intended for Gonzalez. They got Chad Bailey on Tony Gonzalez, and I'll tell you what, that is, you would think that this might be a mismatch for Gonzalez. Wrong. Watch this. Look at the coverage. Chad Bailey is the guy that gets his hand on it. Then Lynch almost intercepts the ball. But I, you, you've got to be very, very careful if you're going to throw the ball where Champ Bailey is. Well, when we talked to Mike Shanahan yesterday, we said, you know, Champ's a corner. Tony Gonzalez is a tight end. He says it doesn't matter. He's their best receiver. We'll match him up. Steve Cheek is the punter. Rock Smith return. And he can eat up some yardage. 51 yard punt, 21 yard return. Champ Bailey. Uh, frustrated and winded Tony Gonzalez. Remember, we are a mile high. And there's a sign outside the visiting team dressing room. Didn't expect to see Champ, ba Champ Bailey on Gonzalez. Champ's wired for sound, by the way. Yeah, we'll be picking up some of that audio after this play is over. Garrison Hurst in the backfield for Denver. Garrison gets the carry. Nothing doing. Scott Fujita. Bailey's wired for sound. <laughs> you know who hit him? I'm gonna tell you. Lynch hit him harder than he's been hit, I think, in his life. They ain't gonna try you like that very often, buddy. I can tell you that. <laughs> Gosh, you can move. Pass complete. Pick up of about five to Garrison Hurst. 
Harrison Hurst, of course, came from San Francisco. And this is a guy who's still got a burst left, according to Mike Shanahan. But what a series of injuries he's overcome. Comeback player of the year, yeah. not once, but twice in the National Football League. Champ Bailey is in on offense again. They take the champ, and Jake took off. And Jake. Near a first down, if he didn't get, he did get it. He got it. Greg Westy dropped him out of bounds. But Jake the Snake got the first down. You know what's amazing about this play? You put Champ Bailey in it, you give it to him a couple times, then you fake over there, do him, and you go back around this side. It kind of freezes everybody. That's a defensive back that's chasing the quarterback. It wasn't a linebacker. Yeah, and then he's faking to a defensive back in the backfield. I mean, when you put Champ Bailey on the field and you get him the ball a few times, everything, all the attention focuses that way. And Jake showed you his speed as well on that play. When Griffin back, he gets the carry. I've been impressed with Kansas City's defense. Last year, they gave up 5.2 yards a rush, the worst in the league. And tonight, Gunther, Gunning, Gunther Cunningham, their new defensive coordinator, has got this defense very, very aggressive. Now, what Mike Shanahan's doing is taking advantage of it by getting Jake Plummer outside and making these misdirections work for him. One of the things about Jake Plummer, according to Rod Smith, is he's more relaxed because he doesn't figure that he has to do it all by himself. But right now he's trying to Rod Smith. Well, you know the thing that's amazing? That the only guy he's really throwing the ball to is Rod Smith. He's the only guy that Kansas City should be double covered. And he's the only guy that's getting open. Well, Darius Watts, you're right, caught one ball, the rookie, out of Marshall. But he, take a look at Rod Smith in the middle. You got a linebacker in front of him. Look at him sit down. You talk about a smart receiver, first of all. He finds the open the hole he sits down Jerome Woods is, is behind him as a safety he just sits in front of him behind the linebacker it's perfect Smith's caught four passes The wide receivers have blocked downfield for him. Elam's extra point is good. Well, you know, Portis had a big day in, in Washington. Watch the moves he made. Right about now. He stops, cuts back to the outside, and you're absolutely right, Joe. He's got receivers downfield just leading the way. Watch this move here. And that's Ashley Lalee coming in on the right of your screen. And he's going to deliver a blow on Greg Wesley. Now, how do you find him when he starts cutting? Look, where is he? <laughs> if you're the Kansas City defense, where is this guy? All of a sudden, he's outside in the open field. Look at that move. That's incredible on Dexter McLeon. And Ashley Lalee doing exactly what the wide receivers of the Denver Broncos are asked to do. Comes in and finishes off Greg Wesley so that Quinn Griffith can get in the end zone. There's a resounding sound throughout the stadium saying, Clinton who? <laughs> <laughs> I doubt it. Not no, yet. no, no, no. Yeah, you're right. Not yet. But I'll tell you what. This is, you know what? This guy, Quentin Griffin, is so shy. Folks, I'm telling you, it was hard to get him to talk. He just, I would say, you know, what do you do? How do you cope with all this? He says, I practice and I go home. home. I mean, it was hard to get him to look at you. Oh, I know. You'd look it down the whole time. It was so refreshing yeah. to see someone so humble and so appreciative of the opportunity that he has to play. Well, one of you guys asked him what he did. With his free time, he said, I don't do anything. I go home. That's a good kick. Mike and Nora 
against the wind five yards deep into the end zone. Let's go down to Susie Cover for more on Quentin Griffin. Well, Pat, he is anxious to show that like the backs who have found success before him, he fits right in. Six seasons, four different 1,000-yard backs. The biggest question about Griffin is durability. He is out to prove that's not an issue. Bronco strength coach Rich Tootin believes that his low center of gravity makes him super durable, very balanced. He slides, he bounces away from tackles like Emmett Smith. He's powerful. He's also a workout freak. If anything, we've got to slow the kid down. Trent Green tries to crease Holmes, and there's nothing there. The Denver defense with seven changes is tougher. Pat, I'm going to tell you, this Denver defense, this is the seventh play, but in the last six plays, Kansas City is minus 11 yards in the last six plays. They got one yard on that play. So in seven plays, they're still minus 10. Now, a lot of it had to do with that sack that Trent Green took that really changed the momentum in this football game. It sure did. Trent Green's got to throw it. Look out, chased again. He got away from two or three people. The pass on the sideline. I can't tell yet if it's complete or not. No, it's incomplete. Eddie Kennison was sliding. Reggie Hayward, number 98. You're going to see him coming in on the right side again. Play action fake. Goes right around the outside. John Wilborn. Now remember, John Tate, the right tackle, is in Chicago with the Bears now, and he's the guy that has been replaced on that right side. By John Wilborn, who was a guard in Philadelphia. Draw play, not nearly enough for a first. Spelled out by Al Wilson, the middle linebacker. <laughs> now we got 7.45 left in this half. And if Denver manages to put some more points up, Kansas City's going to have to throw the ball around. That means that you take Priest Holmes out of the game a lot, which is not good for the Chiefs. Dick Vermeil said, we got to get the ball to Priest Holmes as often as we can. And you're so right, Joe. Take it down another touchdown. This is a heck of a kick. Rod Smith topped it, had it, dropped it. I think he got it back. 45-yard punt, and it was higher than the stadium. Quentin Griffin just sprinted 25 yards for that touchdown. He's not afraid of anybody. The Denver Broncos offense has had three drives, all more than 50 yards, and every time they scored. People like that gentleman will be happy a long time. <laughs> Runner back to throw, lost it high. You know, you know, Pat, I talked about Hoops playing yeah. Griffin in the opening. It's, uh, you know, it doesn't matter who's the running back is. Well, take a look at this guy. But I said he could do it all. Watch this move right here. He's got great feet. Great anticipation, and you talk about a guy that reads what's in front of him. He sees it all. And again, at Oklahoma, you know what it is. he carried the ball over 700 times. I'm thinking of the backs that, thinking of the backs he followed at Oklahoma. Now he's in the same place here in Denver. Great running back. Steve Owen. Billy Sims. Smith with the reception. Fumbled ball and went out of bounds. He's the last in possession. So they'll maintain and maintain possession. Sean Barber chased him out of bounds. Priest Holmes on the left. Excuse me. Quentin Griffin, you see 10 rushes, 7 rushes, 45 yards. Priest Holmes, 52. Now, Quentin Griffin's could go up simply because of the way the score is going in this game. The Denver Broncos, if they can put another score up, they can afford to start to run the ball. And Priest Holmes wouldn't be as big a factor for the Kansas City Chiefs. They're going to have to start throwing it around the place. Uh, he's, he was, Priest Holmes won't be out of there because he was a leading receiver a year ago. And I think they're going to have to go down the field a little bit more, Paulie. Third and one at 39. The 
First Rock Smith. Well, what a job by Gunther Cunningham's defense. Scott Fujita was not fooled at all. Not a bad. They'd have been better off giving the ball. It was Eric Hicks. I'm gonna say I hate this play. I'm telling you now, I don't like this play. I've never liked the reverse. So Anywhere the, in the field. So do the Broncos. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't think now they do. You got third in, a, in about a yard, and now you got fourth and five. I understand. Every time you try to trick them instead of hit them, something goes wrong. Mike and Noah. Here's Dante Hall. Set up on the sideline. Back outside the 40, 46 yard punt, <laughs> so 25 yard return. Donnie Spragan made the stop. We talk about a little guy, Pat, with no fear. Like Quentin Griffin, look at this guy. Watch this. I mean, to make the catch, sees two guys coming out. Now you stop and turn and go. But I'll tell you one thing he does get, and that's a lot of people throwing their bodies around downfield. He does get a lot of block. Well, you do what he's done, you have to get a lot of block. Yeah. And you feel like as a blocker, if you got a guy like that, you want to block for him. was the intended target and DJ Williams decided he wanted to make Johnny Morton just about two inches shorter <laughs> don't miss the 2004 World Series of Poker final night where one player will walk away with five million dollars 2004 World Series of Poker Tuesday at 9 Eastern only on ESPN the backdoor screen. Dante <laughs> Hall. You know, that is, that's just the ability of a punt returner moving around in traffic. There are very few people that could be able to make this kind of play. Watch what he does. You've got basically the entire Bronco defense. Here comes Lynch. He doesn't stand a chance. Now Al Wilson, he doesn't stand a chance. Now Kenoy Kennedy, he gets turned around. He's not sure where he is. All he did was work his way up and get a first down. Mostly on his own. Priest Holmes almost broke it. Champ Bailey tripped him up. Let's go down for more on Dante Hall to Susie Cobra. Well, he could be the busiest guy in the NFL. He's responsible for seven different positions. We know about the Pro Bowl talent returning punts and kicks. Tonight, he started a wide receiver. He's got snaps at the slot, at X, at H-back. He's even in the backfield and playing some fullback. He's responsible for about 300 plays a week. Holmes gets the carry, cuts it back. He doesn't get much, if any. You know, this is one of the plays that, that the Kansas City Chiefs love to run. They stretch the field with this guy, and they pull almost everybody when they do that. And this time, the Denver Broncos cut to the outside. Watch this offensive line of Kansas City. See them all slide left? Hey, you got the center, you got the guards pulling out. But what happens was that they, he cuts back, Priest Holmes does, and the, and the Denver Broncos are sitting there waiting on him. Trent Green. Trent shook away from two of them. Another chasing, and the pass is intercepted by Champ Bailey. After all that, Champ Bailey leaped for the interception. Where do you see Champ Bailey? I'm telling you, he was in the middle of the field at one time. Then he ends up on the right hand side. I mean, it is unbelievable to watch what he does and all he's doing watch here's champ bailey in, in moving now he goes back to the other side he sees kennison he's just watching watching green he's watching green now watch him make the play on the ball see trent green doesn't believe that champ bailey can get up that high to make the interception he just doesn't believe that he can get up there you know the other thing that just looked like trent green could have picked this thing up on his own by running 
He ran enough trying to get in the open field. <laughs> what do you think he was tired? Trying. <laughs> There's a penalty against Denver. Just so you know, Trent Green last year only ran 26 times, so he's not going to be inclined to take off. Too much celebration. Taunting. And you don't want to taunt. You don't Even want to if celebrate. you are Champ Bailey. He has reason, I suppose. He's Good rush up the middle by Junior Siabi. We talked about the 15-yard celebration penalty. There it is. You cannot have a group celebrate. I mean, you, you think that Mike Shanahan's going to be just so mad and should be at those guys. You make a great play, and then all of a sudden, you kick yourself back inside the 10. I mean... You do a great job on defense, and then you shoot yourself in the foot well, by gotta, doing something that's stupid. You got to know it's wrong. It is wrong. You got to know. They've been told by the officials to train the game and by the coaches. You don't do that. Champ Bailey, we told you before, is wired for sound. Here's the interception. <laughs> You know, the guy, there are, there are, these guys really are having fun. I mean, winning and losing. Hey, I'll ask you to play. Go ahead. Win or lose. Here's the, you know, Clinton Porter's for Champ Bailey. It's like both of these guys have decided, you know what? I'm going to justify to the team that made the deal for me that the trade was a good deal. Champ's done everything you can for the Denver Broncos tonight, and we saw Clinton do everything he could for the Redskins today. You know, the amazing part about it, we can all talk about it, discuss it. Everybody that's in the media can do that. Except one thing. Mike Shanahan never asked you or me yeah, or Pat Joe, or anyone else if he should make that trade. I'm tickled that both Pro Bowl players are playing like Pro Bowl players. Well, time will tell whether it was great or not, whether it was good or not. Well, today it's good for both of them. Today it's good for both. That's as it should be. Boutier, not enough, not enough for a first timeout Kansas City. That means they have none left for the rest of the half. 2.44 left to play. Let's again go down to Susie Colbert. Well, guys, this is everything you would want from the best battle in the AFC West. Priest Holmes sending this highlight to his dad, who's with the troops in Iraq. Pick it up where he left off last year. Jake Plummer says they've got plenty of firepower. Hits Quentin Griffin, and then Griffin can do it on the ground as well. Two touchdowns on the night, and this is why they brought in Champ Bailey. His first interception as a Bronco. And oh, by the way, he's played some offense, too. You know what I'll tell you? I like this. I, I like this timeout that Kansas City took. Even though, you know, they go down to two minutes. They're going to get some time to run a couple of plays before the two minutes. They're going to get a time out there. But Denver could have just wasted 40 some seconds off this clock. Mm -hmm. Dante Hall lets it bounce and out of bounds it goes. Mike Nor with a 63 yard punt out of bounds. That's more than you can ask for. You know, it's a 63 yard punt, but the ball went 80 yards. He kicked it right from the goal line, and the Chiefs are taking over on their own 20. What a weapon. What a weapon a great punter is. A great kicking game is. And I guess win doesn't matter, does I guess not. You eliminate Dante Hall when that happens. You guys, you know, you guys keep talking about the win. We have fans up here. That's the wind that you feel. You There's mean, no wind down there on the field. Mean, uh, like electric fans. Yeah, we got electric fans up we, here. We don't have here. people up here. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Green fires outside, not much doing. Pass complete to Eddie Kennison. Always my favorite time in a ball game. 
getting inside two minutes. I love to see how a quarterback and a football team operates. How efficiently can they run plays? How quickly can they get plays off? Green back to throw it. Pass complete. That's to Dante Hall. Wrestled to the ground by Kelly Herndon. We're going to get the two-minute warning. 17-7. Kansas City took the early lead, but the Broncos have come roaring back. Coming up at the half, it's the Toyota Halftime Show with Chris Berman. Fastest three minutes, Boomers Halftime Heroes, Major League Baseball Playoff Update coming up on the Toyota Halftime Show. Get ready, Chris. <laughs> for the first a minute 52 left in the first half and the clock's ticking down here in these next couple plays Trent Green's going to have to force the ball down the field they're going to have to get the ball down the field to somebody up the middle oh pass was bad Lynch a flag flag down well let me tell you first of all Chan Bailey makes the play on the ball which is really great. Champ does get a piece of the ball, but boy, did John Lynch get a piece of Dante Hall. Yeah, but he hit him in the head, and that's and that's bad. And I know John Lynch is tough, but I, okay, they're talking this thing over. Does he hit him in the head? Let's have a look. Well, you got a flag back here in the backfield also. Here's the tip by Champ Bailey. He now, here's the shot. He does it. Number 77 on the offense. Hands to the face. Personal fall. Hit on a defense with the receiver. Number 47 of the defense. Penalties offset. We play first off. Remember. The way they define a receiver in a defenseless position is while the ball is gone, it's been knocked away. If he's taking a few steps there. Now, he's taking a few steps. John Lynch does not hit him in the head. He lowers his helmet and hits him right square between the eight and the two. Now, he may have gotten a penalty for that, but Dante's not going to forget that when he goes over the middle the next time. Yeah, but I'm going to tell you, I think that's a bad call because Dante had his hand on the ball. I, I, think, I think you do it to protect the receivers. I like the call. Red Green, flag on the play. I think the Kansas City Chiefs were moving, yes. John Wilburn again. He's just having a tough time. He's the new guy. See if we can hear that hit, hit by John Lynch. You can't hear it, but I guarantee you the little guy felt it. Dante Hall heard it. I guarantee you that. John Lynch looks to me like he can still play. The Tampa Bay Bucks didn't think so, but I sure do. But he's been hurt. Now he says he's healthy. Oh, pass incomplete. And was he open? You're telling that's Johnny Morton. And I'm going to yeah. tell you what, if he catches this ball, he's gone. He's behind the defense. Kelly Herndon deflected it, got a hand up. Boy, if Kelly Herndon doesn't just touch this ball right there, Ooh, Morton, man. that ball is in Morton's hands and he's gone. That's one of those times when you make a mistake in the secondary and just the flick of a pinky saves you. Second and 15. Pass, I believe, oh. is caught by Morton. That's sweet. You like perfect passes? Oh, man, I love to see somebody throw it. And everybody, all through training camp, all through the mini camps, all I heard from Kansas City people was how great, how great Trent Green threw the ball. Johnny Morton just beat Willie Middlebrooks just over the top. Now, Johnny Morton missed most of camp with an Achilles problem. They need him back. That was a perfect throw. Here's Trent Green back to throw again. Eddie Kennison over the middle, and that'll move the sticks again. 17-yard pickup that time. Let me tell you something. If you're gonna if you're gonna come after Trent Green, you can't do it with four guys up front because this offensive line is really too good. Down to about a minute five left to go before the half. 
Green got the snap and got things underway. Bruce Holmes taken down a great play. Lenny Walls, what a nice Lenny job. Lenny Walls, terrific. What a nice job of that big corner. Lenny Walls, biggest corner in football, six foot four. Playing outside, Priest could not get out of bounds. This is a screen. They figure get Priest out one on one. Well, Lenny Walls comes up to the outside, makes a terrific play. Got a leg and hung on. Green gets it up to Kennison. Not enough for a first, but a 13-yard pickup just shy of the 35. Okay, he's he's got to get it. He's got to ground the ball right now and then try and pick something up on fourth down. And in the 15 seconds, they'll try to run another play. Going deep. Pass was deflected. A flag on the play. Willie Middlebrooks was the defender. Johnny Morton, the intended receiver. Let's see what went wrong. Illegal use of hands. Number 76 on the offense. Hands to the face. 10 yard penalty. Still third down. John Walburn has had a terrible, terrible night. I mean, he's the new guy on the block. But watch this. That's that is hands to the face. You just you just can't do it. Rayleigh Johnson is the guy coming not only hands to the face, but Taking a helmet. Ripped the helmet off. Moves him back to just outside the 45. See, and you know, this, this is exhausting the wide receivers of the Kansas City Chiefs. Third, Johnny third. Morton didn't have a whole lot of training camp. Eddie Kennison didn't have a whole lot of training camp. They've been running up and down here for the last two minutes. Eddie Kennison was going to turn it up, and he turned it out. I'll tell you, Trevor Price is on the ground. Of course, he hasn't missed a play, and they moved Trevor Price, who was a defensive end. They moved him inside. Number 93 is Trevor Price, and he—he's on the top side. He just pushed to the outside. I don't know. And he looked like he fell on his knee. Or it just gave way. He was up against Will Shield. Of course, he talked about Will Shields being the best guy that he plays against. He's amazingly strong for a guy that's only six foot three. And Will Shields, you mean? Yep. Only. Uh, well, that, that's what Trevor said only. I mean, I was sort of surprised when he said only six three two. <laughs> Yeah, he's only been in the Pro Bowl, what did you say, about nine straight years? Yeah, something like that. Only nine times in a mm -hmm. row. Trevor Price decided to redo his body this year. Weighs the same, but has become more muscular and decided he was going to enjoy football, too. When he signed the big contract, all that money went into his pocket, and it went to his head. And he said, I've got to go out and figure out a way. I've got to now go out and earn that money. And it became a job. Finally, this year, he's decided it's not a job anymore. He wants to have fun. Paul, well, why don't we do that? Yeah. Redo our bodies. Yeah, how would you like me to do that? I don't know. We'll get together. Yeah, Hail Mary. This ball is cut. They're going to get another play because this is offside against the defense. The Denver Broncos were offside. They let the play go, and the Kansas City Chiefs so get one more play, even though the clock is at zero. 99 defense. at the five-yard penalty. They get an untimed down. Thank you. Way to go, Pat. The old untimed down trick. Yeah. And they're going to try a field goal. I can't believe this. Well, the ball goes a long way. Lawrence Tynes will try from 58 yards out. Uh, this will be 63. Well, this is certainly something you would not have been able to do with Morton Anderson if he was your kicker. You're right. 63 yards. Get 
Kansas City Chiefs have to go in and regroup and figure out a way to be more productive on offense and not keep shooting themselves in the foot. You know, I don't think they ever not they ever marked off the five yard penalty. They penalized the poor guy. Let's go down to Susie right now. Mike, how would you describe the difference in your defense with John Lynch and Champ Bailey? Well, they're both playing great. We're going against an excellent football team that moves the ball extremely well. So we got to come back in the second half and play with the same intensity we had in the first. Thanks, Coach. Pat, you know, Trent Green went in up to the official and said, wait a minute, you didn't mark off the five-yard exactly penalty. So right. you're Please come you got to bring them the all field. back. They're going to bring them back. They're going to bring them back. They're going to have to take the band off now, too. <laughs> well, they can kick yeah. around the band. Just move over to the right. Leave the band. Well, you know what? You could leave the band there and just move it to the right. <laughs> a little. They're, right they're moving their chariot already. All right. all right. Get the band out. Now what you have to do is now you have to go into the locker room. This is an official there. The ball was not penalized. The five oh, yards. Right. We are going to replay that ball. See, Pat, you were right the first time, the 58-yard field goal. Right. <laughs> the He's only at the 45 before. The only guys that need to come out now are the guys that are on the rush team. Everybody else for the Denver Broncos can really stay in the locker room. And the same thing applies to the Kansas City Chiefs. You don't need the entire team standing out there on the sidelines well, for this. There's nobody out here for Denver. Nobody. Their team is in the locker room. Here they come. Way to go, guys. the fact that Trent Green went out and said, wait a second, you didn't do this yeah. for us. I guarantee you somebody upstairs had to see it. The drummer, drummer's going to get the uh, whiplash. <laughs> They're moving the band back off. This is bizarre. Back in time, just a minute. Ray Lee Johnson jumped off sides when there was three seconds to go on the clock. If it's a defensive penalty at the end of the half, there is an untimed play that is allowed. And the Chiefs lined up to kick the field goal, but the officials never marked off the five-yard penalty against the Denver Broncos. There's number 99. Ball's on the 46-yard line. Give or take a half an inch. All right, he comes off. Trent Green will then run around and throw the ball away. Now there should be an attempt from about the 41 and a half yard line as the line is scrimmage. Nope. Now they went too far. <laughs> now they did go too far. Now they five yards. I believe it's a 10 yard penalty now. It's unbelievable. So now how long is the field goal going to be? But well, wait, when they mark the ball, Pat? Okay. <laughs> it's going to be 54 yards. All right, here it is. I just want to show you. That's the, the ball should be on the 40-yard line approximately. Uh -huh. Now what Mike Shanahan is yelling, because he has a picture. Now they're going to show the picture to Bernie Cooper. And I don't know whether this one, whether they might want to show these officials some crayons to go along with the picture. <laughs> Okay. But uh, Mike can't believe where they're marking it. Mike's out there on the field. Is with good mark reason. It. Let me mark it. I'll mark it for you. Now Bernie Kukar is going to talk to somebody who's even more official than Mike Shanahan. If they put it back where it should be, it would be a 58-yard field goal. Pat, where do you think he's going to kick it from about? About 58. Well, if it's on the 41, it would be 59. Yeah, 59. That would break a Kansas City record if he makes it. Record held by Nick Lowry. All we need is a fake field goal and a defensive penalty. To prolong <laughs> it one more time. Yeah. I it's, think Chris Green is probably the only one that saw this. Well, went to the official. Yeah, but Mike Shanahan sure saw the other one. Now, the ball is at the 46-yard line right here. Right there. Okay. Oh, that's Lynch. I'm sorry. Here. Right there is where the ball is. Now, that is where it should be spotted. Okay? They'll get it right. They're going to get it right. They will in a week from now. 
See, I, Bernie, I believe, has to get the official word. He can't take Mike Shanahan's word for it, although I think he took Trent Green's word for it that he didn't never mark it off. I mean, I don't... All they have to do is look at our replay and, and realize that the ball has to go down to the 41 yard line or the 40 and a half yard line. All you need to do is call the replay booth upstairs, which I believe he is doing now to get the exact spot. All right, Bernie, way to go. Congratulations, guys. Well, that last three seconds of the first half has now turned into 10 minutes. It's unbelievable. And they, uh, the entire teams have come out on the field. Yeah, I know that. Including a very upset Mike Shanahan. Well, the ball that he kicked from five yards further back would not have made it anyway. Now he's five yards closer. Who knows? Officially 58 yards. And that would tie the Kansas City record held by Nick Lowry. I still don't think he can get it there. Look out. Hey, it may be good. He got it there. It was he just wide. Him. Just wide. That's right. And our score here at Invesco Field at Mile High is Broncos 17, Chiefs 7. Now let's join Chris Berman for the Toyota Halftime.